Hello everyone, Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician at Gates Brain Health. Today I'm talking about the truth about whippets and B12. And uh, it seems that this is a poignant topic after the lockdown that many of us have been in, or the whole world has been in this year. And what we're finding is that the recreational use of whippets, as they're termed, recreational use of nitrous oxide gas from these cartridges for uh, whipped cream are having some devastating consequences on the nervous system and something that really all parents, I, in my opinion, should be aware of. Nitrous oxide is regarded in the lay public as being something that is safe. Uh, supposedly, I mean, some people view it as a, a safe drug, and certainly there are going to be people who can use it, may have less side effects than others. But just this year, 10 articles have been published on the abuse of nitrous oxide and spinal cord damage principally and or peripheral nerve damage. So uh, I think a good overview of B12 is, is fitting for this discussion. And... Um, so that's where we're going to segue in. Again, my name, the truth about whippets and B12. So we're going to hide that one and we're going to bring in this one. So why are whippets so important and why is B12 so important? So B12 in many ways is along with vitamin B9 are two of the most important vitamins for your brain, your spinal cord and your peripheral nerves. Certainly a whole host, and hello to everyone who's joining, a whole host of, of vitamins and minerals and fatty molecules are super important for brain function, but B12 and B9 in many ways take the cake because without them, uh, neurological problems are profound. So in this diagram, you can see what we refer to as the methionine cycle. <clears throat> if you read uh, stuff in the functional medicine literature, they'll talk about uh, methylation. And methylation is a really important thing in our body. And we need methylation for making things like myelin. So myelin is, for all intents and purposes, the insulation around your nerves. So we need methylation for insulation around the nerves. Uh, for example, one condition that dramatically affects the insulation around our nerves is multiple sclerosis. So if you've known someone with MS and the, the really difficult uh, effects of that disease, you can then begin to understand how without myelinization or myelination, so to speak, excuse me, not myelinization, myelination of our nervous system, we can have a lot of problems. Like we may not be able to walk. We may have numbness and tingling. We may not be able to control our bladder. We, we may not be able to make memories correctly. We may not be able to see correctly. We may have vertigo. So myelin is very, very important. So as you see here, vitamin B12 in the diagram, vitamin B12 is needed for folate, excuse me, is needed for homocysteine to be converted to methionine. Also, the active form of folate is also needed. That's what the left side of the diagram is representing. Now, methionine turns into s methionine, which is involved with the methylation reaction, and then s homocysteine becomes homocysteine. When someone abuses nitrous oxide, the nitrous oxide binds to B12, it oxidizes it, it inactivates the B12, and eventually will deplete the B12. So nitrous oxide is a great way to kill your B12. Now nitrous oxide is commonly used in anesthesia and dental practices. It's the laughing gas as people refer to it, but <clears throat> as a lot of articles refer to it, as uh, whippets are no laughing matter because of their significant deleterious effect on B12 physiology. So I think that pretty well summarizes it. The end result is that homocysteine builds up in the body, in the bloodstream, and homocysteine leads to things like blood clots. And homocysteine is really inflammatory for the brain. It can cause vascular dementia. Uh, in older adults, homocysteine is not something we want to be high. So I'm going to hide that diagram. This diagram I, I used in another B12 broadcast. And it again represents the methionine cycle. It also represents how important B12 and active folic acid are for DNA synthesis. 
And one area of our body that is constantly involved with DNA synthesis is the production of red blood cells. So if you don't have enough B12 and active B9 in your body, then your red blood cells can become really large. They don't carry oxygen as well. It may lead also in part to a hypercoagulable state. And so that may help you also to understand that B12 not only affects the myelin of the nerves, it not only affects inflammation in the brain and the spinal cord, it also affects your red blood cells in your bone marrow. Moving on, <clears throat> a large percent of the population is struggling with anxiety and depression. And so anxiety and depression are big, big issues, particularly coming out of the pandemic or you know, the various phases of the pandemic. I don't think we're completely out of it. And, um, and mental health is a big issue. We need active folic acid along with B12 to form good neurotransmitters. And I just have this diagram up here to then illustrate this one, where you can see that you have to have the 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate and B12 to make dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. That's what these uh, labels refer to down here. So DA refers to dopamine. Norepinephrine is NE and 5-HT is serotonin. So if you wanna deplete your serotonin and your dopamine and your norepinephrine, whippets are a great way to do that. So if, and you know, the title of this article is the truth about B12 or truth about whippets and B12 is such that if you know someone who's abusing whippets and they have anxiety and depression, you really wanna show this to them because you need B12 and active B9 to make neurotransmitters, these chemicals in your brain. And if you're taking an antidepressant, that antidepressant is trying to keep more dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin, a mixture thereof, of those chemicals in between the brain cells. <clears throat> and if you're just depleting your B12 willy-nilly with whippets, then you're gonna have less of these chemicals for your antidepressants to work on or your anxiolytic medications to work on. And then let me see here. So in terms of treatment, if someone has been abusing whippets, clearly the first step is to stop abusing them. Um, substance abuse treatment certainly is probably something that we want to consider. B12 injections are typically what are recommended at least for two weeks. Um, and then B12 supplementation after that. And then there's the better way to say it is that typically B12 injections are going to be administered by your doctor for a successive period of days for two weeks, and then they go to weekly and or monthly. Uh, I'm not prescribing that. I'm just describing what's in the literature. B12 supplements will be used orally, and then dietary changes. You want to have a diet rich in, B in vitamin B12. This is a particularly concerning issue if your child or you are vegan and or vegetarian. I'm vegan, so I have to be highly aware of my B12 status and those of us who aren't eating meat all the time are at more of a risk for something like whippets or other forms of abnormal B12 absorption to cause some major issues uh, going on. So major issues going forward. So and hello again to everyone who's joining. seems like we have a great crowd here today. So, so that's pretty much the discussion. Um, let me know your thoughts or questions. I hope this made sense. I hope that you have an overview of the physiology. Again, summarizing. Um, nitrous oxide inactivates, oxidizes, and depletes vitamin B12. Without B12, the most common first symptoms are to develop tingling in the extremities and or weakness. Uh, frequently, those who are abusing whippets present to the emergency room with signs of damage to their spinal cord. They oftentimes have signs of really high homocysteine in their blood, which indicates that hypercoagulable state. And some do make a recovery. Not everyone makes a recovery from this whippet uh, over usage. So hopefully maybe you can go over some of this with your kids, go over this with a friend and let them know that this is not a safe thing to do and the opinion of a lot of neurologists. And that's why 10 articles have been published just this year on a seemingly remote issue, but a really, really important issue. For more information on my B12 broadcast, go to Gates Brain Health 
uh, the YouTube page. I think I've done two or three recently on pernicious anemia and autoimmune gastritis. There you can see the physiology of how B12 is naturally absorbed. Other things that may be affecting B12 absorption, such as autoimmune gastritis. Uh, if you have a family history of thyroid problems, you may have autoimmune gastritis as well, which can also deplete your B12. So those factors you really want to consider, veganism, autoimmune gastritis, especially if one is using whippets. So I hope uh, this was helpful. Have a happy weekend, everyone, and uh, I'll see you back here next week.